What's up everyone? Welcome to a special Smite video. If you like Smite and you also happen to like Magic the Gathering, then this video is going to be perfect for you. Now I'm making this because uh, a couple days ago I saw a post on Reddit and it was someone who had used this site, MTG Cardsmith, to make some joke Smite Magic the Gathering cards. And it was really cool, like a lot of them were pretty funny, he had some joke mechanics on there, and I really like that idea. I love both Magic the Gathering and Smite, even though I haven't played Magic in a while. But uh, I grew up playing Magic, and, you know, Smite is something that I've been playing for the last couple years. So, I thought it'd be really fun to just make my own cards and try to be serious about it. Like, make some really good cards, something that you could potentially use in an actual deck. So... I think I've made 15 so far. My plan is to make all gods into cards at some point, probably, you know, within a couple months or something like that. Um, and I was also thinking it would be cool to do, take some of the items and turn those into artifacts. And you could also make, like, the maps into lands or something like that. So there's a lot of possibilities. If you like both Magic the Gathering and Smite, this is definitely a video for you. And you can go to this site, mtgcardsmith.com make your own account and you can make some smite cards and it's pretty fun i definitely have enjoyed doing it so i'll just go through them and just share that what i've made so again i've made up a lot of these mechanics you know some of these have existed the mechanics have existed before but you know i i kind of took the theme of each god and tried to translate that into like a magic the gathering mechanic so this is Nuwa. i have her as multicolored which makes sense because she has all the elements so you can summon a clay minion, obviously. You can draw a card. And you can also, <clears throat> if you use a forest, uh, a, a red and a blue mana, you can return up to three cards from the battlefield to your hand. And each creature that you do must be a different color. The, the reason you'd use that mechanic is if a, a creature you're attacking with or blocking with is about to die, you can instead pay the mana and even though they block the damage, they will not die. They'll just return to your hand. So that's a pretty cool mechanic. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with Magic the Gathering, some of this might not make sense. But uh, I'll try to simplify it as much as I can. Janus is another card that I made recently. I think uh, I made yesterday. So I, of course, made him an artifact creature. Um, actually, before we do that, I'll go over kind of how the cards are set up. So... Um, when you make the card, of course, you can make your own title, you make your own mana cost. Um, you get to put down what type of card they are, so artifact, creature, and you can also put the specific type, so all of them are called gods uh, in the card. You can also choose which series or pack you want to have them in, and then you get to type in all of the, uh, the flavor text and, and all the, the abilities and stuff. And you also get to do the, at the bottom, the uh, power and the toughness. So it's basically if the first number on the left is your attack, and then your the number on the right is your defense. So um, that's how I set it up. And you get to upload the image, of course, if you just download, save the image, and then upload it um, on the site, then you can use whatever you want. So Janice is v very much into, again, his theme, as I may try to make most of the cards that way. So you can pay as much mana as you want, and for each mana that you pay, you get to put one creature you control onto Janice's portal. Now Janice's portal I made as a different card, and when Janice comes to the battlefield, you also summon his portal. And so you can pay mana to put creatures on the portal, and when they are, they're in exile, which basically means that they cannot be interacted with by your opponent. Your opponent cannot destroy them, they cannot attack them, they're basically out of the game. And then at any time you can remove one of the creatures from the portal and put onto the battlefield. It's a really cool mechanic that I made up just to basically have your cards saved so that they can't be affected and then whenever you need them you can just put them onto the battlefield and then attack. So that's why. And another thing in Magic there's different rarities. Common cards are usually not very good but it goes up to common, uncommon, rare and then Mythic Rare. All of these are Mythic Rare cards, which means that they're going to be very, very strong. And so I tried to make their abilities reflect that. The fact that they're Mythic Rares means I want them, all of these cards, to be very, very good because they're all gods. So it kind of makes sense for in Magic to have a god be super powerful. Um, so Kepri is next. Um, Kepri's ability is 
all the creatures you control have vigilance. That means that when you attack, you don't have to tap them, which means usually you, if you attack, you tap, and then when your opponent goes, if you have a tapped creature, that means that they can't really block or do anything, but when they have vigilance, that means they can both attack and block. Um, suspend 2, which basically means you can pay less mana, put the card off to the side, and then after two turns, you can summon it. It's basically a good way to reduce the cost to, to summon a card earlier than the mana cost, because the mana cost for Kepri is 4. So you get to pay 2 mana, and instead you just have to wait 2 turns, and then he can come onto the battlefield. And then when he comes into the battlefield, you can add a plus 1, plus 4 counter to each creature you control. Pretty good defensive buff to your character. So that kind of makes sense, you know, since he's the Dawnbringer, when he arrives, he just gives buffs all of the other creatures. Um... Nox is next. Nox, I made a swamp card, a black card, obviously, because she's the goddess of night. Kind of makes sense. Um, her ability is she is unblockable if you have three or more creatures in your graveyard. Black cards, a lot of the times, will interact with the graveyard because of the whole theme. Um, if Nox deals damage to a player, you can return a target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. So that's another mechanic that happens, taking creatures from your graveyard, putting them onto the battlefield. That happens a lot with black cards. And because of the first ability, because she's unblockable, that means you're more likely to deal damage to a player. So that's how the, the abilities kind of interact with each other. So that's Nox. Um, as far as strength goes, again, if you don't play Magic, uh, of all of these cards, I would say the strongest one is e either Janus or Nuwa. Both of those cards are pretty strong. Nox is, is okay. She's pretty strong, like, again, because she's Mythic Rare, she's going to be strong. Is she the strongest card that I made? Probably not. Um, the next card is extremely strong. This one's probably broken, actually. Um, and again, I'm not, you know, I don't know everything about magic. So, some of these abilities might be completely broken. This one seems very strong. So, he has haste, which means that he doesn't have summoning sickness. So, if you played Hearthstone, you know, you if you summon a creature that can't attack first turn, it's the same thing in magic. Um, you can pay one red and you summon a 2-1 artifact. Now you can activate that ability as many times as you want. So if you have like 10 reds, you could summon 10 turrets. So that could actually be pretty broken. But again, he's a mythic rare, so they're supposed to be really good. It's like having a legendary creature in Hearthstone. You know, they're all really good. Um, and then when he enters the battlefield, deal 5 damage to target creature or player. That's just to kind of go with his theme. His ultimate is like, in smite, it's a huge damage ability. So I figured I'd try to put that into his card too. So that's Vulcan, pretty cool, he's a red creature. Poseidon is next. This is one of my favorite cards, obviously, because you get to summon a Kraken. So when he enters the battlefield, you scry four. That basically means you get to look at the top cards in your library and decide if you want them or not. Um, you can pay three blues and put a 7-7 seven, seven Kraken creature with haste onto the battlefield until end of turn. So you get to summon it for one turn, do seven damage if you want. Um, basically just like his ultimate and smite. So he's pretty cool, very fun card. Um, Scylla's also really fun. I think her abilities go perfectly with her character and smite. So th this is an actual mechanic, it's called monstrosity. And what you do is, once you get onto the battlefield, you can pay this mana cost and turn them into monster into a uh, turn them monstrous and the four basically means how many buffs they get so you get to put four plus one plus one counters on Scylla when she becomes monstrous which means that she's going to become an eight eight creature instead of a four four and then when she becomes a monstrous she will deal five damage to a target creature if she destroys that creature you get to deal five damage to another so that's just like her ultimate in Smite. So, I, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. I figured it'd be a cool um, a cool thing to put in her card. So, Shibalanke, this card I love because, I, for some, you know, I love aggro decks, which is basically low mana cost cards that you can just pay, uh, play right away early game. And that's what this card is supposed to be. The only thing is it doesn't really make sense, and I didn't realize that until after. So he has Death Touch and Shroud. Death Touch means anytime you damage a creature, they die, um, which is really, really strong. So let's say he's attacking um, an 8-8, eight eight, right? That 8-8 eight eight will still die, even though he only does 4 damage to the 8-8. Eight eight, it'll still die because of Death Touch. 
He also has Shroud, which means that it can't be the target of creatures or abilities. So it kind of goes with this theme, you know, Hidden Jaguar Sun. But the second ability, Infect, doesn't really make sense. Because he has Death Touch, it doesn't make sense because this, what it means is every time you deal damage, you basically permanently take away minus one, minus one. So you take away one of their power and one of their toughness. And you don't need that because you have Death Touch. So they're going to die anyways. So this card probably needs to be changed. But it's still, I like the theme of it, you know, and I like how, it, you know, it's a good aggro card too. Um, <laughs> next is Zeus. Zeus is pretty interesting. <laughs> Just bro really broken. Uh, I figured he had to be because he's Zeus. Now, the reason that it's okay that he's broken is because it costs 8 mana to summon him. And that's a lot. That's like the most. Usually, usually you're not going to see a card that costs more than that. It's very rare. So very expensive, late game card. But he's unblockable, indestructible. Um, and he has Vigilance. So basically he's unbeatable. I think you can still target him with abilities. You can still counter him. Um, but you can't like destroy... You can't use... If it says destroy target creature, you can't use that on Zeus. But you can still um, counter him if he's summoned or something like that. Um, and again, Vigilance means that when he attacks in turn, the next turn he can block. So he can both attack and block in within two turns. His ability is you pay three white mana and you deal three damage to each creature that your opponents control. If a creature is destroyed by this ability, you get to exile it, which again means it's removed from the game. So it's not in their graveyard, they can't bring it back from their graveyard, it's gone. You cannot get that creature back. If a creature is exiled this turn, you get to put two plus one plus one counters on Zeus. This is basically a game ending card. That's why I made it. It's <laughs> If you get to the point where you have eight mana and you summon this card, you're probably going to win. Because you get to just if, let's say they have an aggro deck and you put this on, you're going to deal 3 damage to a bunch of low health creatures, they're all going to die. And then you get, for each creature you get plus 1 plus 1, so he could be, you know, a 30-30 at one point or whatever. Um, so, yeah, this card's insane. Just the mana cost kind of makes it okay. Um, we have a couple left, and actually these four might be my four favorites. So, Al Kuang, the Dragon King... I thought it was fitting to make him both a blue and a green creature since he kind of has both of those themes. Um, you get to play, pay one blue, one green, and tap him and destroy target creature. It cannot be regenerated. So this is basically his ultimate in Smite. I thought it'd be a cool thing to add to his card. Kind of made sense. And then you can also pay one blue and he gains Shroud until end of turn. So this is basically his um, uh, illusion ability. Water illusion. Um, so... You activate it, and he can't be attacked or targeted by spells or abilities until end of turn. So it's kind of like uh, Stealth, if you know Stealth in Hearthstone. Pretty much the same mechanic. And he's a 5-2, so he's a very, this is a very strong card. Like, this would be kind of broken. Just like Al Kuang is in Smite. Uh, Geb is next. This is one of my favorite cards that I've made. Because, I, you know, Geb is the icon for my channel. And I just like, I don't know, I just really like the ability. So, you get to pay one green and regenerate target creature. So, that means that if you attack or block with a creature and it gets, if someone else blocks it, or let's say someone else is attacking and you block with the creature, what you can do is pay that mana and it basically regenerates all of their, their health. So the creature doesn't die. So you could, an eight, let's say an 8-8 eight eight is, is attacking, and you block it with a 1-1. One one. You, after you block with it, you can pay the 1, regenerate the 1-1's one health, and it stays on the battlefield. So the fact that you have one card that you can use to regenerate any creature is actually pretty strong. Usually this ability is something that is just on a single creature, so that makes this very strong. You can regenerate literally any creature that you have on the battlefield. Um, and then the second part of this card is... When Geb attacks, you get to choose a creature, and that creature will gain the protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. So you can make, you know, one big creature that you have, or one creature you really want to use, um, just invulnerable to whatever you're playing against. So it's a very good defensive card. You can use it in a lot of different situations. I really like this one a lot. Um, of course, I made these, so I'm a little biased, but... 
Uh, you know, it's fun. Also, I didn't mention this before. If you saw the flavor text, I have, like, voice lines for a lot of different cards. If I had too much text, I may have not put some flavor texts for some of the cards. But, see, I have the Earth Moves for Geb. I have some other ones for other gods, too. So, um, that's Geb. I think I have a couple more. Fafnir, this is one of my favorite cards. I love this card. It's another card where you can become monstrous. Because Scylla can transform uh, in her ultimate and so can Fafnir. So I thought it made sense to have this mechanic for both of those cards. So he has Monstrosity 6. You have to pay 6 mana and then you get 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters. So he can become a 10-11 creature if you get a Monstrous. Of course, he costs a lot of mana. He costs 7 mana. Very expensive. And another reason because of that is the second part which says... If Fafnir is monstrous, you may cast all of your creatures for one mana. That is very, very strong and broken. Again, would this card be viable? Like, would I be? Would you be able to release this card? Probably not. I don't know. Again, I'm not really good at like balancing these things, but it kind of made sense because he's the Lord of Gold. You know, to be able to cast your creatures for super cheap. So um, that's Fafnir, and then the last card I have for right now is Jing Wei. Jing Wei is blue. Makes sense. Blue actually is the color that has a lot of flying creatures. So to have her be blue just made sense. She has flying. And if you don't know what flying means, um, basically if you're playing against uh, an opponent and they don't have any creatures with flying, she can't be blocked. She can only be blocked by creatures with flying. Um, you can also pay one blue mana and return her to your hand. This has to do with her mobility and smite and also her ultimate. So again, it's one of those things where if you attack and someone blocks you and the damage that would be done to Jingwei could kill her, instead, before the damage goes through, you can pay the blue mana, return her to your hand, you still block the damage, but instead of Jingwei dying, she's just back in your hand now. It also means... If you read the second part, if Jingwei returns your hand this turn, her cost is reduced by 2. There is a second summoning step that you can do, so you could potentially return her to your hand after combat is over, then pay, uh, you only have to pay 1 mana because she costs 3 total, and put her back out. So she's basically an unkillable, kind of, you know, sneaky blue creature that can just kind of go in battle, do what she needs to do, get out, and then you can put her back in. So that's kind of a interesting mechanic. Very, very strong. Um, so, uh, so yeah, those are my cards. I hope um, if you're into, again, both Magic and Smite, maybe you found some enjoyment of this. And if you're interested in making some cards, again, the site is mtgcardsmith.com. And if you do make some, I would love to see them. Please share them uh, with me. I would love to do that. I'm going to keep making cards because I find it very fun. So uh, I'll, I might do another video sharing the next group of cards that I do. There's a lot of gods and, and uh, you know, items that are in Smite. So there's really a lot you can do with this, and it's pretty fun. So thank you so much for watching, um, and, you know, go out there and make some cards. Thanks so much, and uh, have a great day.